What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're going direct drive on our Anycubic Mega S. This Sherpa Mini is a 3D printed extruder that gets you direct drive. Works on so many different printers. Today we're going to be installing it on this one. This name I feel like shouldn't even go here anymore. If you have any better names of what I should call this printer, this Frankenstein's monster of a machine. Let me know if you have a good name for what I should call this in the description down below. Maybe we'll have a voting poll on that. But first, I think we should go back to what is direct drive. Very quickly cover the differences. Direct drive uses a PTFE tubing that's more this size. Mine is 45 millimeters here instead of something more this size. It's a very big, long tubing getting you from your extruder and the gears pushing filament instead of being mounted on the side of your printer. It's mounted directly above the hot end, really pushing filament very direct there. So the supposed benefits, you get much shorter retraction distances. I'm running 0.5 millimeters of retraction instead of before I was running either five or six millimeters of retraction. With that, the goal is to reduce stringing and oozing when the printer is moving between different parts of the print and also flexible filaments. With a Bowden tube, flexible filaments can really get jammed up inside of here and it's much harder to push and pull when the filament is flexing back and forth. So with this, flexible filaments should be a bit better with a direct drive. So first off, let's cover the parts you'll need here. Even though it's 3D printed, there are some parts you will need to buy. First off is this little pancake motor on here and then the gear set. Both of them I found for around $20 each. So about $40 is the cheapest I've found. You can definitely go up to get some higher quality gears on there. And I might recommend getting a more quality set of gears from a more reputable sourcer. When it comes to sourcing the motor, there's several options you have. LDO and Stepper Online are two of the big name brand ones, but then there's also a lot of cheaper ones that will probably work great. This printer, since it's not in an enclosure, this motor won't see those constant high temps that enclosed printers would have. So I do think most motors would work here, but I think Stepper Online and LDO are the two big ones I would recommend people go towards. And I will have links for a bunch of different options down below. With the whole supply chain issues in the world right now, some places sell out, and so I just wanted to put a bunch of different options for you down there. These are all good places that I would very much recommend someone sourcing from. And if you do end up buying the cheaper set, you might run into some issues getting it installed, but you're not the only one who's gone that route. I went that route and did have some issues with the installation, but I did get it working in the end and I can step you through that. So one of the best parts of this mod is just how easy it is to build. The hardest part most people might run into is trying to print these parts since they do recommend you print them in ABS. Since it is kind of crammed up next to this motor, any heat from there could deflect it if you're printing in PETG or PLA especially. But there are even some options out there. ABS is kind of a tricky one to mess with, especially with a printer that's not enclosed, you can buy those parts from somewhere else, source them elsewhere. Since it's such a small amount of pieces, easy to source. Putting it together is very quick and easy. There's a little document on the Sherpa Mini GitHub that'll step you through all those steps. I, I thought it kind of steps you through it way better than I could. One unique thing I had to deal with with whatever kit that I had ordered, the white gear was slightly out of alignment, so I had to press it down. And then there were these little teeth on that middle center rod that I took a file to that had to sand those down a little bit so that I could get the next piece to fit onto that rod. So if you happen to end up with a similar kit as mine, that's kind of the workaround there. And it works great, it's up and running for me. It just does take some extra steps to get working. Also, if you wanna learn more about this, you can go check out Annex Engineering's Discord page. They do have a upgraded version. This is the Sherpa Mini I put on here. They have a Sherpa Micro. And I was thinking a few grams difference between them wouldn't help me since I've got such a large hot end on here anyways. If you're really going for speed and lightweight, Yes, the Sherpa Micro will help, but that's a newer design and hasn't had as much testing as the Sherpa Mini has. This is a more tried and true, known working system. Sherpa Micro is newer. So you can for sure go with either system you want, but that's my reasoning for why I went with the Sherpa Mini over the Sherpa Micro. So installation here is extremely easy, so I can take it apart and show it to you exactly right here. There are two screws that hold the extruder onto the whole hot in X carriage assembly. Once you have this upgraded X carriage mod, you just change out the face plate here and that gives you mounting points for this. Since you will already need some heat set inserts for the Sherpa Mini, it's good to just have some extras. And once you buy some, you'll wanna put them on every 3D print you make. They are so amazing and so easy to use. So basically that's it. You take it off, it's right there. I can unplug the motor and then I've got this entirely taken apart. This is the extruder. 
It's just that easy to take off and work with, which makes it really easy if you're having issues with it. You can really see in there, see the gears. If there's dust or clogs on anything, you can see the clogs and get them cleaned out so easy. So now installation, I do have this PTFE tubing down in there and that is a 45 millimeter one that worked for me. I would recommend cutting a little bit more than you might think and then try to fit this on top. If it doesn't fit because the tubing is too long, slowly cut it down to you at the right distance. You wanna make sure it very snugly fits with that tubing. Wiring is another issue you do have to deal with, so if you're not comfortable around soldering and crimping wires together, that is something you will have to deal with with this mod. So I cut the clip off at the extruder motor where it normally is, and then spliced on these wires that run up through this cable chain to the extruder here. And on the other end here, I did put a little connector here. I just thought it was a little bit easier to put a plug here. That way I can easily take it off like I just showed you. One last thing you will need to change is what current you're giving this motor. Since this is a different motor than the stock motor, you might need to get under there and tune your TMC 2208s or whatever stepper motor drivers you have down there to give it the right current. For this, they do recommend 0.35 amps stock. In my tuning, we'll cover later, bumping it up to 0.4 amps really helped me out. So if your stepper motor drivers aren't in UART mode, you will need to get under there with a multimeter and a little screwdriver to adjust that reference voltage to make it to make it the correct value to equate to that RMS current. Mine are in UART mode now, which makes it way easier, but that really came with this new board I put in there. In standalone mode, you really just have to get under there, tweak it a little bit. It does make it more difficult, but once you set it and things are working well, you won't need to mess with it again. And that's kind of all there is to the installation. It really was quite quick. Only took a couple hours to get all of this up and running together. Tuning, we will get to in a second, that takes a good bit longer. But I also like how much this is reversible. Of If I needed to, I could simply take off the extruder, like I just showed you, splice these wires back onto the extruder motor that came here, and that's just about all you need. Put your Bowden tube back in there, and you'd be running on a Bowden setup very quickly. So once you have got it installed, the next big task you're up against is tuning it. And there's a lot of issues. The first one I boxed a little, I printed a little calibration cube, and this turned out horribly. Uh, I was very worried when this came out. I was already starting to look at how I could undo this mod. Luckily, I went through, it kept going. So the next thing to do after you've got it installed is an even bigger task of tuning and calibrating, getting it working well. The first cube, right after I got it installed, I said, let's just see where we're at. And I printed this calibration cube and it looks horrible. I was so worried initially. But then I slowed down, started going through the calibration. The first thing to change is your pressure advance values. I think that was a big issue of why I had so many gaping holes left in this cube. And I realized I haven't done a video covering input shaper and pressure advance. That's something I will get to. But for now, look at other YouTuber videos. There are some great ones out there. And there is a written guide I will link in the description down below that can step you through some of the process. So then after I tuned that, I got a decent looking box, but then I got the dreaded curse, the wood grain issue here. They call that because it's kind of this irregular graining you'll get on a print. And a great way to show it off quickly is printing vase mode prints. They print a tall cylinder in vase mode, and that will show you if you're getting any of these inconsistencies. Since a vase mode print won't have any retractions all the way up, you know it's not your retraction settings you haven't messed up. You'll know it's just the extruder isn't working great. Luckily, there is an amazing Discord. You can go to the Annex Engineering Discord, and I just did a lot of searching for my issues and reading what other people had basically run into these exact same issues and what other people recommended to fix them. One first issue I found was that this thumb screw that I had on the side, there's a little thumb screw that meshes your dual gears together to grip the filament as it's passing through the extruder and it could not get tight enough. That little threaded screw was just too long so even if it was all the way in, it wouldn't get enough pressure. So I had to put my own screw on there that's I think 30 millimeter M3 nut on there, and it gets a lot better of a squeeze on the filament as it's passing through there. I was just having skipping issues because the gears weren't squeezing the filament firm enough. And that really improved things. The next big thing to tackle is your gear backlash, how much gear backlash you want between the motor and its driving big plastic wheel. Since the motor can be angled at a different angle, to get how 
hard, it's pressing into that plastic gear. And you really want it loose enough so there's a little bit of backlash on that plastic gear. So you can get in there with a small tool and move the plastic gear just a little bit without moving the motor gear. You don't want them too firmly meshed together. That can wear out that big plastic wheel a lot faster. So it's a very common issue a lot of people said they've had. For me, I tried several different angles there of how much pressure between those gears I was getting and it wasn't clearing everything out. And then as I continued to go through their Discord, I did find one other person who recommended just bumping up your current a little bit to run it at 0.4 amps instead of 0.35 that was recommended stock. And I bumped it up and I started getting perfect results out of it. The prints are now coming out smooth and consistent, just looking great. So now I've got a perfectly tuned, ready to go direct drive extruder on this printer. One thing I did run into is the downside of this mod, you will lose some Z height. Since when this is all the way up, the motor runs perfectly into this metal rod right here. So now I tested it and my max Z height is only about 170 millimeters. That's what I capped it at, so as to not have any issues here. I usually don't fill the Z height volume, but if you wanna keep filling the Z height volume, then this mod might not be for you. I also then printed a retraction tower here. This at the bottom is zero retractions at all, then 0.1 millimeter, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way at the top. So I am running 0.3 since that seems to look the best. And I am running 30 millimeters per second retraction speed. That's just what someone else recommended. And it's been giving me good results. Another big tip I would recommend, whenever you're working on modifying your extruder or something vital to the operation of your 3D printer, and it's a 3D printed part, print extras, especially if it's your only printer you have. Me, now I do have extra printers. So if I printed only one and it had an issue, I could print a duplicate on another part. I learned that the hard way when I first bought this printer, I was so optimistic and I printed out some sort of fan mount mod or something, and I was halfway through installing it and I broke a little piece off. And I was pretty much dead in the water and had to fully take off everything I had installed and take it back to the stock. And then I just left it in stock for several years. So don't be like me, just print some extras. They're very small. You won't be wasting much plastic. And I will probably find use for these extras in the future because I really like this extruder. So now onto some close-ups of some of these examples. Here is a little moon city, and this was even before I got it finished. It still has some of this wood grain issues on the back, you can see, but the retractions are still so good. All the little details in there of the tower in the middle, how well it was able to retract, move between those spires as it goes up. It's really an impressive print. But here's an example of a benchy neck side by side. The light teal is direct drive. The dark teal is Bowden. And they both look good. I don't think it looks vastly improved because I was getting great prints out of this Bowden system. It might be a little bit better, but I think it's a very small difference between them. And it's very much within the margin of error. And this direct drive benchy did have some issues with cooling. That was printed on a very hot day. And so on the bow, you can see a little bit of issues and some of the issues in the corners. So now I guess the question is, was this whole thing worth it? For me, I had been having issues with my stock extruder here. It wasn't extruding great. Not sure if that was a clogged nozzle I should have just changed, but I already had this printed out and ready to go. So I was ready to change this anyway. Are the results vastly better? No, they're not vastly better. They may be marginally better, but also I think within, it's within the margin of error of which one is better. The Bowden tube, if tuned correctly, can give you great prints. So if you're still using a Bowden style extruder, you're not missing out on this amazing world of direct drive. You still have a great extruder, you can still make amazing prints. But if your extruder were to break on here, I would not fix a Bowden system or buy a new Bowden system. I would go direct drive since nowadays the gears are getting better, the motors are getting smaller and better, more powerful. There have been some huge technological advancements that have made the direct drive way better in the recent years. So I think I would recommend this mod if your extruder has broken or isn't working well anymore, or if you really want to get into flexibles, or if you just love modifying and upgrading your 3D printer, this is maybe a $40 to $50 upgrade here. It is a very easy to install and work on extruder since it's mostly open. You can really see in there if things are getting clogged. 
The stock extruder is a black box. It also literally looks like a black box of it being black and a box. And you can't see in there if gears are getting clogged. It's hard to clean those gears. You'd have to take it fully apart to be able to see those gears. But now I wanna hear from you. Have you switched to direct drive? And what are your comparisons between Bowden and direct drive? Have you had vast improvements? Or maybe there's a use case that I'm not even thinking of, of why direct drive is vastly better. And for anyone out there that's doubting that Bowden is a good system to use, go check out 24 seven printing. They have some of the world's fastest benchies printed on a Bowden system. So Bowden definitely isn't a bad option. And I wanna make that clear. You don't need to upgrade. If your Bowden system is working great and you're getting great prints out of it, that's kind of the goal with this system. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Go check out the Annex Engineering's Discord if you wanna learn more about their extruder or all their other technologies they're working on. And go out there, create something amazing today. And I'll see you in the next video.